All right, guys. Um, did a video last night, but I'm starting to scrap it. Do another one. Um, that's to be fair. That's what happens with a lot of videos. <laughs> um, it's probably three times as much content that we took the videos I've actually uh, dis destroyed or deleted. Um, what I find with this Chinese phone, um, which uh, doesn't have any of the Android facilities, thanks to the Huawei we uh, v uh, Google um, Android. Uh, privacy battle thing um, which I find quite ironic because if Google aren't doing exactly the same I'd be shocked <laughs> <coughs> but as you can probably guess I'm just getting over the flu um, but I've been looking at how we could develop the channel because it's sort of been drifting a while um, I'm going to continue with the sort of positive theme so um, but it's going to be a little bit, I'm going to start doing some stuff for teenagers as well, because to be fair, I think between, I don't know, 12, age of 12 and 30, um, I think there's a lack of information out there for people to progress, you know, because I, I find life's a bit more complicated than it used to, because... Um, um, because you've got to bear in mind, in today's society, you're told you can be anything. Man, woman, blob, whatever you want to be. Um, you're told you can do what you like. The problem with that is, is it's a lack of structure. It's a bit like, you know, when I talk about religion, when I say I get it, but I don't follow it, in the sense of I'm not religious, but the structure that comes with religion... I can understand why um, a lot of religious people are more content, a lot of religious people are on specific paths, um, uh, but even then, you can broaden that out a bit. It's a bit like, I uh, mentioned Paul before, when he got married to a woman from Thailand, and I apologise, I've known him for years, but I still don't know his wife's name. Um, but he went from being uh, an agency worker, um, just doing general labouring and very basic jobs, um, to developing his CNC skills and going full time and focused on getting to where he wants to be. So he went from basically having inconsistent work to they own a restaurant, they own a house, they, um, he still works. Um, but but the point being is he got structure, and I think this is where we have it may have one of the best educated generations in the fact of the availability of knowledge, but they may be also the least equipped simply because the structure's not there. You know, it's a bit like um, having all the parts to build a ship. But never be able to build one. <laughs> you know, <coughs> I've got to do the welding course. I've got to do the uh, the engineering courses related to ship design. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. That's life today. It's a bit like if you're not happy with your career, change it. Buy our course. But I don't know which course I want to do, and I don't want to know where I want to be, and I don't know what's my objectives and what's my goals and where do I want to head. I'm not 100%. And that's the reality for too many people. And this is why when I was talking about millennials on previous videos, it's I'm engaging um, with people that are younger than me uh, lately uh, more, whether I like it or not. I mean, I have um, an assistant, for example, in their early 20s, which is something I never have. I don't normally have people that are juniors. They're normally project managers, uh, engineers etc I don't generally have um, junior staff but you the way people think is very different to the way I do so like I said with engineers and stuff it's it, it's often very structured and it's not hey how's your day going it's more none of your business <laughs> well I asked you for this um, have you sorted it and I like that you know because you can keep all your other stuff away you know your personal life is none of their business and they don't want to hear it and in the same way you don't want to discuss it and that's all great but when you start getting the way society is today they're trying to push you into stuff that you wouldn't normally even look at um 
and I don't think it's good. I really don't. I, I don't think there's a place for personal life in the workspace in many places. And I say many places because in some places maybe you know if somebody's having a hard time or whatever, I get it. You know, how's your day going? Oh, it's crap. I've having a hard time at home. Blah blah blah. Fine. You know, sometimes it is good to vent. But for me, do I need to know about their how many kids they've got and all that? No, I've got zero interest. Um, but you know, if somebody's having a hard time, I'm quite happy to step in and listen. But am I a psychologist and whatever? The answer is no. Um, and this is where I think some companies are losing their way. But moving past, because a lot of the problems they've got are, like I said, the, the there's a shift, and the shift, you know, like you used to just go to work your job and all all your fun stuff is outside of work but now they're trying to pretend that work should be interesting but often it's not interesting it's tedious it's boring and actually expecting people to enjoy their work i think is a big ask anyway um especially if someone has been doing it 20 odd years they're often just looking for their pension or their palates at six o'clock tonight and all that sort of stuff work is just work to them because it's it's this false inspiration because you, you've you been inspired by people that have gone down a path of what they want to do. And as somebody who owns a company and as somebody who has passion about what they're doing, that's a very small amount of people because um, the average person is not in that space. And I think it's unfair to constantly drive them as if they should be thinking the same. I don't think it's correct. Now, there's a big difference in where that's been focused and what I'm, I think it should be. My personal view is, it's like I said, the, the positive focus should be on the stuff outside of work. The positive focus is if you're not happy, do something, change it. Um, it's like myself at the moment, I'm sitting and thinking because I'm bored of the work I do. It pays bills, etc. But I am finding over the last 15 years, um, the skill base has gone like that you're dealing with less and less intelligent people, um, but often people who think they're more and more important. Um, so quite simply, they don't have the skill sets and knowledge that the same level of people would have had 15 years ago. They're often five minute wonder college courses instead of 10 years experience and, you know, more than multiple qualifications and, um, <coughs> proven delivery um, so for me I understand even for myself that it's becoming frustrating um, and I'm looking at alternatives myself and that's that's where I sort of sit back and go right where do I want to be from here and I think this is where it sort of fits in um, where I'm looking at the teenagers that are going through this I'm like, you know I look at my, my son at the moment and he's going through um, I mean, he started doing some martial arts now, um, but he's starting to go through that teen phase of trying to work out where he wants to be in life. And I'm looking and thinking, he's multilingual, he is intelligent, um, but the big problem is, people go, you can be whatever you want, but that's not true. You can head off in what direction you like. But at that age, who knows what they want? Like I said, even myself, I'm looking at changing um, my position now because I'm bored. And financially, it doesn't make sense to change. But then I look at um, the house is well underway now. I've got my main goal, which was the property. Do I, do I want to spend another five years or three years doing the same stuff that um, the majority of people I've known for 20 years have left. Um, don't get me wrong, the pay's okay, but to be fair, most of the people I know are sick and tired of it um, because it's, it's an aggressive, negative industry. Um, Everything's a problem. Every day it's a problem. No one ever says thank you. The, the whole concept of 
people being grateful is they haven't moaned. That that is my industry. <laughs> so we keep buildings running, we keep them operational. If nobody's phoning, emailing, complaining, that is you've done a great job. What a great place to be. <laughs> um <coughs> Not that I want praise, because like I said, my focus is the house anyway. But the point is, you do get to a point where you're like, like now I'm sitting, I mean, this is my thoughts, my personal ones, is I need that conservatory finished upstairs in the new house. Conservatory's there, redevelopment of the upstairs floor, so it becomes like a, a lounge and office space. But at that point, I've got my office to work from Spain. At that point, I can focus on um, an exit at the moment I can't focus on exit because I've got no working space um, so I'm sort of stuck at that, that position um, and it's not like an excuse you know you say oh well, you should just carry on you can't because the problem I've got is the stuff I've got in the UK is ticking over I'm busy you know Monday Friday I've got stuff to do I'm looking at the weekends and what I can do there to try and stimulate um, some extra revenue to actually two things start the new direction more home based um, and the other one being um, to hit the mortgage because the, once the mortgage is gone my cost of livings were under a thousand a month um, which isn't that hard to hit you know um, I've got a lot of um, capabilities, you know, even if I went to the UK three months a year, I could fund living in Spain. So the point being is, there's options there. <coughs> but I'm trying to move away from that. I want to be in Spain full time, then start moving to progressing my Spanish, etc, etc. So I'm fully integrated. Um, but that's where I'm sort of saying, I'm looking at my my son at the moment where it's starting to get up to that point where where do you want to go in 20 years? What do you want to achieve? What career do you want? What do you want to be able to do? It becomes, hmm, I'm not sure. And I think this is one of the things I think the channel needs to focus on is how do you find things that you want to do? Because um, you can drift for years without actually doing anything you like doing. I mean, it's like today, I'm, you know, I've got books I want to read and then I'm messed around on YouTube this morning um, just to see if there's any updates on the Ukraine war. And then I'm sitting there going, why am I bothering? Why am I encouraging YouTube to give poor information? I mean, I look at the way they're demonetizing uh, people that are, should we call them third party, third party news in the sense of they're YouTubers rather than a mainstream news news network they're demonetizing them even though their information is more like a historical outcome rather than uh gruesome conflict you know in the sense of they're talking about the war lines have moved that sort of stuff but they've been demonetized because for me i say a lot of this stuff is just to push people down certain paths we, we want you to follow the mainstream. If you're not following mainstream, um, we'll cut off the revenue of these other people. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Um, but I do find that um, it's a peculiar setup, YouTube, um, in the way that it does make itself very, very selective. And I can't believe it's just on advertising. Um, Although advertising is a strange beast, you know, it's, it is not a good place to be building a business model out purely around advertising. Um, you probably want, why is that? Well, have you done direct sales? You know, where the focus is on elderly, people that are easy to manipulate, people that are easily targeted, people that have specific habits, needs, etc. to make as much money out of them as possible. That's advertising. It is not a nice business model. It, uh, sorry, it's not a nice business. It's about money, nothing else. 
and this is where society has polluted itself I think and this is another reason that I think the teen stuff is important because too much has become advertising led or funded led should we call it funded because often it's political um, which means you end up with a narrower and narrower stream of information and a narrower stream of good information because you'll find a lot of distortion out there um, it's a peculiar environment to be in because what becomes truth and what becomes fake it becomes hard to decipher because the mainstream's got worse and like I say they deregulate and defund a lot of the stuff around youtubers and people just putting out just general information and thoughts because if you're removing opinions you're removing common sense you're removing thought processes because a lot of the time they can be completely wrong but the whole point is is having access to multiple sources is how you get as close to the truth as you can um, which gets me back to my point is I think some of this stuff needs to be directed in how to move people forward like I said I can sit and criticize advertising and all that stuff all day long if I wanted to but at the same time it's counterproductive it ain't gonna change um, I think what is important is how to generate revenue streams how to get from A to B how to start thinking about where you want to be um, three years five years ten years from now um, but also not limiting yourself because one of the things I will say in your teen years is learn to enjoy it I think too many teens are unhappy because their uh, childhood's been stolen because of the way society is geared up you know when I was a kid we, well even when I was a teen I was out partying most of the time you know until I hit probably about 24 I spent since I was about 17 to 24 going out pretty much three three times a week um, and I, to be fair a lot of it was a blur <laughs> because you're out partying and enjoying stuff it wasn't focused about uh, your career it wasn't focused about your job it wasn't focused about money it was focused on enjoying stuff in the same way it's good to be focused um, to be progressive but I also find before, below 24 you may find it hard to actually be taken serious as well so um, I think the one of the key lessons to start with is don't worry about it too much at the beginning um, you'll work something out as you're going along and things will progress um, but like I said you can always reevaluate you can reassess you can change direction like I said myself I'm looking at it myself and I'm not 21 anymore <laughs> but I know I can still learn new skills, I know I can change direction, I know I can find stuff that gives me more time with the family. Um, but what ultimately is my goal? Well, to be in Spain full time, um, having to take over money, not working excessively, because um, then I can develop more stuff that I actually enjoy doing, because I want to do stuff around videos, traveling. Um, and the reason I try not oversell that stuff is because this platform, they're probably its biggest generators. You know, content being pushed out en masse um, is allowing YouTube to make a fortune. Um, while, like I says, you may find that some of the content out there isn't making much money for the people generating it. It's like the gold mines. The biggest money in the gold mines is the guy selling the shovels. Um, and that's what you got to look at the money for me is not out the travelling the money is about just ticking over the travelling element is the fun element 
doing the video stuff is the fun element doing the drone stuff is the fun element now if I can generate a revenue out at the same time all good but main thing is keep it on tick over um, but it's be nice if others head into that sort of space as well because if you're <coughs> financially ticking over it gives you the opportunity to think of something else and develop and progress into something else um, and then like I said if you're in your early teen years you don't need to be making the same sort of money you know for me I've got a wife and two kids a mortgage all the stuff um, that costs money and can restrict where you want to be now that's not a negative because you know my family are everything to me uh, you know my kids you know it's like my daughter in the UK I you know, message her about on a regular basis and meet up if we can um, but the point being is that's my priorities you know if my kids are doing well my wife's happy the house is paid for that that for me gives me the ability to have flexibility to do the stuff I want to do because they are the main priorities but like I said even then I'm assessing do I need to be doing what I'm doing now or can I rejig re it so <coughs> to give an example my mortgage has gone from I think it was 500 and something last year it's now at 380 because I've been hitting it with my spare cash getting the mortgage down um, that's going to continue doesn't matter what I'm doing I'm going to be hitting that mortgage because the mortgage once that's gone leaves me food electric and um, water bills that's about it for Spain people go oh buddy what about your pension mm. my father had a crap job um, for over 20 odd years and dropped dead four years after you know four years after retirement pension is not my priority investment yes having other properties that I can generate income on a monthly basis yes Wait until I'm 67, not a hope, because um, who knows if I'll ever hit there. Um, so that is not a priority. And this is this is the funny thing um, when they started all this people's pension and all this other stuff in the UK, because people have lost interest in it because they don't trust the government. They've been robbed once, and then they just had um, Liz Trust nearly car crash the uh, pension funds again. Um, you haven't got a stable government, which means you haven't got a stable pension fund. So for me, it's a different direction. It's about getting to the point where I can be in Spain full time and I can work everything out from there. Um, but I think if you're a teenager, I think you need to focus on what you like doing. Um, you do. You end up. You probably end up in a job you don't like doing. Um, but part of life is working out how to get back on the path that you want. And it's easier if it's funded, which is why you do the job you don't like. Um, and the other thing is, is when you're thinking about the job you don't like, remember to train, learn, experience. Because if you're turning around and going, I hate it, but don't have an exit, you'll probably drop the job, be out of work for months, and end up in a job you don't like. And that pattern can continue for a long period. What you want to do is educate, get your direction. What do you like doing and how do you head down in that direction? Myself, I should have stayed in computers years ago. Um, it's funny, a lot of people would, do say to me, "Why? Well, I thought you would have you know, been with Microsoft or something by now. Um, it's because I went off in different directions. Like I said, I went out and parted for years. Um, but the point is, is you've got to get in a direction and keep nibbling away at it um, and it can be a case of just every Sunday reading doing you watching YouTube videos learning new skills to get you to where you need to be and also listen for other opportunities out there 
um, one of the guys I work with, um, he was talking about one of the um, another contractor was asking him to produce some of the health and safety documents, um, and I was like, I could do that. So instantly, it becomes hmm, producing health and safety documents, you know, construction phase plans, um, risk assessments, method statements, tedious, boring stuff that is required for every project. I could do that remotely from Spain. And yes, it's boring and tedious, but once my balcony's built with the conservatory on it, it's not that hard to go up there in the morning, spend a couple of hours watching the sunrise, etc., doing the work, and then go and do some hours in the afternoon. That's where I want to be. Um, like I said, not everything is about what you want, you know, in the sense of <clears throat> not every job's going to be great. Doing those documents is boring and tedious. Um, but it's a means to an end. And it is stuff that people don't like doing and likely to be a good cashier in it. So watch that space because that's something I'm going to be looking at myself. Um, it's the same with doing data modeling and other bits and pieces with Excel. There's a lot of um, stuff out there that you can make money on the side with. Um, same with project management. There's, there's plenty of stuff out there. And the good thing about being online is you could possibly lie about your age and nobody really engages with you in that way. So as long as you understand what you're doing and how to produce it, people per hour may be a solution for you. But anyway, just throwing that out there today. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd share a video today simply because um, I did do another video about changing the focus of the channel, but I think it's better to discuss it this way because I've thrown some tips in there while I'm at it. Um, but any thoughts or any ideas please post them below um, also I don't normally do this but <clears throat> if you've got recommended channels as well post them below you know for example if you're talking about personal development uh, people that are useful for video editing um, people that are, uh, understand Excel or <laughs> whatever it is you think these guys are really good to recommend this channel put it below um, we're also going to start a channel as well, um, like a chat channel. I'm a bit wary because I'm going to have to set it up with bots and stuff in because I know it's going to get spammed. <laughs> um, but I think it's good that if we actually set something up so we can have discussions. Um, I say discussions as adults because I know with the Philippine John Joe, there's so many bloody trolls in that that, that John <laughs> Um, but all that will be filtered out <coughs> um, but I want to start looking at how we can sort of develop the group and um, so like I said I didn't even say develop the channel because as far as I'm concerned the channel is what it is it's, the channel is not a cash generator for me um, I've never made any money off this channel I actually give the money away um, but, but the point being is I want to develop the channel um, Sorry, the group. <laughs> the group, so that we're focusing on where we want to be and how we're going to get there and multiple inputs. Because often, well, pretty much always, the video is like this. It's one way. Where we open up a um, sort of text-based channel, like a forum, um, it can, can go in different directions. And I think that's important. Because it may not just be me that you're engaging with. You may find that other people with a similar mindset in the chats, you suddenly go, oh, wow, didn't know you existed, blah, blah. And then yeah, you're off. You've, you've got someone else you can work with. Because a lot of the problems that people have <clears throat> is actually having somebody to bounce things off. Um, and I says a lot of this stuff today is much harder than it used to be. Um, I mean, it's a bit like I used to have a lot of social groups before I went off around the world, and um, a lot of those people are, I don't even know where they are. I mean, it's a bit like uh, one, of, one of Stevens over in uh, Texas now, and then you've got, um, yeah, most, most of my old friends aren't where they used to be. <coughs> we all sort of travel. 
Um, but I do think is we'll we'll start this group up and start looking at how we can progress things. Like I said, it's not going to be straightforward. It's not going to be a five minute thing. And there's probably going to be subgroups in there. Because, um, for example, learning Spanish. Um, that's that's that could be a subgroup where we start set up our own Spanish groups, um, an Excel group, uh, different different groups in there for specific things. The same as business development, video editing. And then if people want to start developing some training material around there or recommend training courses, because one of the things out there today is everyone is creating these training courses, but how much of them are garbage? Um, because you've got to get something out of it. I mean, I've got to admit, I spend a lot of money on books, magazines, and information, and I'm going to start spending more time reading them again, because um, work previously bogged me down to the point of, I got the stuff, I never progressed it, and this is one of the key, key things here, is don't get bogged down. Um, if you want to get out of that sort of scenario, you need to understand, you need to break out. You need to refocus, re-educate, and realign where you want to go. Um, but we'll talk about more in the future. Thanks for watching.